the f budget shot. Good morning everyone and thank you for joining us for this edition of Press Pass TV on The Beat where we put a spotlight on community news, education, and entertainment you won't find anywhere else. Today we have two segments taken on sex trafficking and the recent proposed cuts in the Boston Public School budget. On May 22nd, a public hearing was held at City Hall about the Boston Public School budget cuts that would eliminate yellow school buses for middle school students. Press Pass TV was there to see what they had to say. Let's take a look. The amount of all these policy changes totals $11 million against what was to be our projected FY15 costs. One of the Boston City Councilors who was conducting the hearing was Tito Jackson, who is here with us to discuss this issue. In addition, we have Georgia Scott and Gary Murchison from the Bus Drivers Union. Thank you so much for joining us. Councilor Jackson, why do you think the decision to cut buses for middle schoolers was made? I believe uh, a couple things. One, I think it, it is a policy issue, as we've, we have seen from the uh, school committee that uh, they're trying to cut back on costs uh, for transportation. It's about 10% of the $1.2 billion that we spend. But the, the, the real underlying issue is uh, the school department as well as the city did not prepare for uh, many of the cuts um, that were happening. So uh, we know that Race to the Top uh, was a three-year program. President Obama said it was a three-year program. So we should have uh, thought about uh, incorporating those dollars into uh, the larger uh, budget. We know that the, the uh, health care was going to go up, and we also know that uh, the bus contract was signed and the teacher's contract was signed. All of that said, um, when it comes down to it, there was uh, there's a financial issue. We started with a $100 million deficit. My only issue underlying all of this is that we can't have a school system unless our young people are able to be delivered to school safely. Uh, we can't have a school system um, that tosses young people at the most difficult time in their life. You're 12 to 14, and to toss them onto the T, um, knowing that uh, the T is now installing doors um, to protect bus drivers, knowing that uh, a w about a week and a half ago, two young people, a 14 and a 19-year-old, were stabbed at Shawmut Station. And this past weekend, um, there was an autistic uh, young man who was uh, sexually assaulted. Um, we have to make sure that we protect our young people um, from any hurt, harm, or danger. And we know that everybody who drives a bus has a, has, is quarried and sorried. And we know that uh, they are uh, folks um, who are to be trusted um, in transporting our kids. So that's why I'm fighting this fight. Lastly, when it comes down to what public safety means, and I've seen many presentations, I'm not talking about worrying about young people crossing the street. What I'm talking about is the fact that some streets have visible prostitution um, that, that are going on. And also, some neighborhoods, the public safety issues mean that young people probably will uh, have issues. And we're not only talking about bullying. Um, we're actually talking about life or death decisions um, that young people have to make. There's no addition of 
police officers. There's no addition of school police officers. We're just saying, young people, go ahead and get to school. And that, in some neighborhoods, like the neighborhood that we're in on Boylston Street, that might work. Uh, but we know that most of our kids in Boston come from Roxbury, Dorchester, and Mattapan. We know that 80% of our students are black and Latino, and we know that most of them are poor, they come from poor neighborhoods, and they have to deal with the realities there. We have to do right by our young people. The best thing that we can do right now is to find the $8 million someplace. There's a school budget vote, there's a operating budget vote, and there's a capital vote. Um, we have an opportunity to have our voice heard loudly um, if we don't come to a good conclusion. How is it this, this decision impacting bus drivers? Well, it's, it's impacting us because we're losing jobs and it's already started. We are the strength behind our children, the children that ride our bus. We are like parents. If the bus break down, we have other buses to come pick them up on the T that that's not happening. And I have two granddaughters that now attend Boston Arts Academy. They ride public transportation. It's been many a mornings that they've called me and said, Nan, we don't have a, a train. So sometimes they're out there for an hour, two. Don't get transportation, so they have to go back home. One of them get high honors. She says, you know, Nanny, I want to go to school. I don't want to lose the credits that I have, you know. If she was transported by us, there would be a bus, a backup bus to pick her up. So what the school is doing is they're saying that, you know, we'll let you make that up or it won't count, but it does count. She's smart enough to know that she has issues with it. So, you know, and I, like I told her, I told her to call the mayor, call the city councilors, call everybody, let them know that public transportation is not the way to go. Our children are not safe. Oftentimes those public transportation is slow. And again, if the T drivers are being put in cages, then why would I want my child to be in this big box with all these different people. We have one, just one goal, that's bus drivers. We pick up these precious students that we most as hold sacred, I've been doing for 30 years. This drivers have been doing it for more than 40 years. And it always seemed to appear to me is that every time there's a crisis, it's either affect the black community or our children. It all, the budget always end up <laughs> in that area. It always has to come to a tragic in order for them to open their eyes and say, oh, we made the ultimate wrong decision. Well, you, you can see that before you even make the decision. So why most of us even consider that? It doesn't make any sense, but it always is on the back of our children. Daylight saving time is gonna start relatively soon, as you all know. When daylight saving time, I'd be picking up kids at six something in the morning, six ten in the morning, dark, standing on the corner, just waiting for my bus to come picking them up. At least I try to make time to get there a little earlier so that I can pick them up so, they, so that I can know that they're safe on my vehicle and I'm taking them to school. But get on the MBTA bus, who's going to worry about them? And what actions are bus drivers taking? When they took this vote, parents, they, parents weren't even aware that they're taking this vote. The union had to print up, print up flyers to more so get out to the community to make sure that they was aware of the next hearing that's taking place. And apparently we're going to have to do the same thing this time around in order to get the uh, community involved because they are sort of left out on the back burner when it comes to more or less that they are um, being aware of what's going to take place come September. How can our viewers get involved? So I think uh, viewers can get involved in, in several ways. Pick up the phone, 617-635-4000. You can call the city council office, also get you to the mayor's office. And, and understand, if, you, if we get 15, 20 phone calls about anything, it could be a pothole, uh, it could be anything. Um, it becomes um, the, the top priority uh, for us. Also, get online, cityofboston.gov. Um, all of our email addresses are there. They, they actually surveyed students mm -hmm. um, without, I believe, the knowledge of, of parents at, at, at that time. The survey was a really interesting survey. Young people in groups thought it was a great idea to be able to have a bus pass. But then when you follow back up and you ask them individually, over 90%, nine zero, over 90% of them uh, had identified safety as an issue when taking the MBTA. So understand, group, everyone's for it. And then when you talk to them on an individual basis, they are raising the same safety concerns uh, that, that we have. Make your voice heard. 
pick up the phone, 617-635-4000. You can ask for all of your city councilors there. Uh, go online, cityofboston.gov. Email every single one of your city councilors. And if you need to, do a change.org or any of those other uh, forms uh, that you know that is able to push uh, this information out to folks. $8 million is, yes, uh, a lot of money. Uh, but when it comes down to it, um, the best and most important investment uh, that we can have is in the safety of, of our young people. So that $8 million pales in comparison um, to any of our young people uh, being irreparably harmed. It, this is not the first time something like this has happened. History is repeating itself. We as people, as communities, all about need to come together, let the city know we're not going to tolerate it. I don't want them to have to fight the same battle that I fought 40, 50 years ago. I don't want them to have to repeatedly fight it. And that's what's happening, because to, to take these kids off the school bus and put them on a tee or have them walking, waiting on the train, it put them in a situation where they don't want to go to school. It's cold outside. We don't have the money to drive our children to school. Our children need the transportation. They do not need to be on the T. I go to the community meetings and I advise everybody to go, anybody that possibly can, come out and find out exactly what's going on, why these cuts are, be, uh, are being taken place. There's a disparity in terms of the T, in terms of the setup. In Roxbury, Dorchester, and Mattapan, there's a lot less rail than there are buses. And so there's another, another layer of disparity where other parts of, of the city actually get to get on a train, whereas in our neighborhoods, we're going to most often uh, be getting on uh, a, a, a bus. Even though it's called the Silver Line, it's still a bus, right? And so when it comes down to it, there's that additional disparity in terms of uh, the MBTA. The T has actually also been very clear. They're not adding more buses. They're not, not adding more trains. They don't have the capacity uh, to do that. And so we're going to be tossing an additional 4,500 people, young people, who need to get to school um, on, on the T um, at peak hours in, in, the, in the morning. Uh, this is, to me, a, not a well thought out uh, plan. In addition, when we look at the data around who, uh, who is currently taking, and, and they, they told us initially that the people who currently take the T actually go to school more often they have, and they have less tardies. When we pulled back that data, it was mostly charter school students, uh, pro, uh, private and parochial uh, school students, as well as test school students. That's an unfair and a very skewed approach um, to the data uh, that, that, we're, that we're looking at. It's, again, absolutely critical that our young people be delivered to school uh, safely. And, and I also note, some people put their young people um, in a school that's a little bit further away for a reason. And that's what no one wanted to hear this when we were talking to, in the external advisory committee about, um, about transportation. Because understand, they didn't, no one wanted to talk about quality. Because in Roxbury, Dorchester, and Mattapan, the number of quality schools that are there are uh, less in number than other parts of, of the city. So that happening at the same, that, that whole change around quote unquote neighborhood schools or AKA walking schools. Um, at the same time as taking away uh, transportation, forces people to be closer to home, but oftentimes have access to lower quality schools. That's unfair, and we, as we are celebrating the 60th anniversary of Brown versus the Board of Education, um, it is absolutely critical in the city of Boston that we step forward and we do right by the students, 87% of them that are black, Latino, and Asian. Actually, we can't remember, we have to remember our 13% of our students are white kids also, um, that all of those young people deserve to be able to be delivered to school uh, safely. And so I want to thank you so much uh, for your voice. Um, I want to thank you for um, doing what you've done at, at Charlestown High School um, and really look forward uh, to hearing uh, the voice of Vox Populi, uh, what Cicero referred to as uh, the voice of the people. And as, as noted and at many rallies that the people united uh, will never be defeated. And we're going to continue uh, to fight and we're going to fight for our young people. Thank you so much.